Hello and welcome to the lab. Today I have a bit of a different video for you. We're going to be focusing on identification of unknown chemicals. The Signal Path did a pretty good video a little while back talking about Raman spectroscopy, which is a really cool technique that uses scattered laser light to identify material. The problem is that the equipment involved is pretty expensive and out of the reach of the average hobbyist, and so I thought I'd talk about some lower budget techniques. So today we're going to be discussing Raman spectroscopy. and Ramane spectroscopy. So you can see here, I've got three different flavors that we can try and identify in UV, visible, and infrared. And I've got four different flavors here. These two should be pretty easy because of the different colored dyes added to them. But the lychee and the original are both transparent in the visible spectrum. So let's see if we can actually tell them apart. Okay, so for our initial test, we're going to turn on our halogen lamp, and you can see we've already got a quartz cuvette in here that's loaded with uh, some distilled water to give us a absorbance baseline. And so we're just going to sit here and clear the uh, old waveforms. And you can see we've got some averaging going on to uh, improve the SNR. Some of these uh, colors are a little bit weak, and so I figured the averaging might help improve accuracy. And so up here, we've got the uh, raw spectrum coming off of the spectrometer showing the uh, emission spectrum of the halogen lamp. You can see they've got the big peak in the infrared around 750 nanometers, and then it tails off towards the visible and the UV, as well as the uh, deep infrared. And uh, now down here, we have the normalized absorbance of the sample, and you can see we've already pretty well normalize it. The SNR does get worse again as you get deeper to the UV and the infrared. We start to see some problems because we just don't have enough counts to get good data. And so really we're going to probably be getting usable spectra from about maybe 400 out to 900-ish nanometers with the current setup. And uh, if we wanted to get any further off that, we'd probably have to invest in like a deuterium lamp or something like that to get into the deeper UV. Anyways, this should be a good starting point and we'll see what kind of data we can get from it. So let's start with something easy. We'll try the orange Ramane. So I'm just gonna open this up real quick. Try and not get my bench all sticky. And then we can take a sample and we're gonna stick it in this cuvette here. And so we need enough to fill this up to about a uh, 10 millimeter path length, which is our standard cuvette size for absorbent spectroscopy. I am curious if I'm gonna need to degas this first or if the carbonation is gonna be an issue at all. I've never actually tried to uh, do measurements on a carbonated specimen before, and so we're going to see what that does to our data. Uh, initial impressions are not looking too great. There's a lot of bubbles in there, and so we might have to give this some time to go flat before we can get useful measurements. So we're going to put this in here, and we're going to go give that a minute to settle down. But right away, we can see that we've got a pretty good absorbance line developing down here, so we're transmitting, let's just clear the average out of there. There we go. And so we can see we've got a fairly low absorbance over here. All right, it is, it is still moving around. We've got bubbles blocking the signal. So I expect it to improve a bit as the bubbles dissipate. Uh, anyway, so we've got a pretty good uh, low absorbance here, pretty much zero, pretty much noise. And then it starts to absorb a little bit more into the infrared. And then as we get down deeper into the blue and UV, that's probably the uh, orange dye is transmitting in the red and orange. And then as we get down to the yellow, green, blue, it starts to have about, we're looking at around a 0 0.4, 0 0.45 absorbance under the uh, current conditions. And, you know, that, that makes sense because this is not a super dark orange color like some of the uh, more traditional American sodas tend to be a little more vibrantly colored and the uh, Japanese stuff tends to be a little bit more pastel. And so anyway, we'll take a reference spectrum of this and we're going to see if we can get, it's, it's still moving around, the bubbles are really messing with the spectrum. So we're just going to call this good and stop our acquisition here. And we're going to take a memory trace of this. And so we're going to call this our Aran Dramane. 
And so we'll just save that waveform, and then we can go do some samples of some of the other flavors and see if we can actually tell them apart. All right, so we got that spectrum. Let's try and get some of the next flavor. So this is yuzu, and it's a nice, pretty yellow color, so we should expect to see a little bit more transmission on the other uh, end of the spectrum with a little bit more red as well. And so we're going to see what happens there. Uh, before we do that, though, I did actually leave the system to sit for a little bit longer and hopefully get some of the bubbles out of the way. So I'm just going to try and see if I can get a slightly better spectrum of the orange before we go any further. And yeah, it's, it's still jumping around as the bubbles shake around. So I'm just going to give this a little bit of a gentle tap here. See if I can dislodge some of these bubbles in the path and see if we can actually get a slightly better spectrum out of that. All right. So there's our shifted spectrum from the orange. That looks a little bit nicer sitting again pretty much near zero absorbance on the red into near infrared and then absorbing pretty strongly towards the blue and green. So we're going to leave this sample here just in case we want to get one more spectrum after it's degassed a bit. And in the meantime, we're going to go get a sample of this yuzu flavor right here. And again, it's probably going to have to degas for a bit before we can get good data, but we should get at least a qualitative overview of what it looks like early on. Let's get that out of the way. So we're going to give it a little more time for the bubble to dissipate before we actually take our spectrum of record. But just glancing at it right now, we can immediately see the Ramane spectrum is very distinct compared to the orange. The Yuzu has a lot less absorbance in this band right here from about, we're going to say, 480 to 560 nanometers. We've got a significant difference. So this right here is a pretty good distinguishing mark for the two. All right, it looks like we're starting to get most of the bubbles out of the way of our measurement. The spectrum's not jumping around as much as it was. So I'm going to go take this one and call this good. Of course, just as I say that, it jumps. So we'll, we'll have to give it a little more time. And let's just color this spectrum so it looks like the sample so we can remember what's what a little more easily. All right, yeah, it looks to have stabilized pretty good. So we're going to say that the Yuzu is probably a fine spectrum, and then we'll just put back the orange one and make sure we get something that looks a lot like our original curve, and we'll just clear the averages. And again, we can see pretty distinctly the spectrum looks just about what we had before. It's a little bit of a delta down there, so I don't know if our normalization was a little off or if we still had some bubbles there that were causing like a 1% absorbance line in. No, it's, it's, it's converging, so this is pretty good. Oh, making a little mess here. All right, let's go clean that up. All right, so we're still rolling and I've cleaned up the mess and now let's go collect some more data. So you can see now I've let the uh, two samples sit while I had the camera off to degas fully. I collected nice clean spectra from both and we can see now that there's a very clear difference both around 431 nanometers and also uh, into the infrared around 1090. There's a pretty big difference where the orange is a lot more absorptive in the IR than the Yuzu is. And so now we're getting to the interesting part where I'm going to try and see if the lychee and the original are any different. So we'll start with the lychee first. And we'll put that in this cuvette here. Still got a few drips in the bench. It's going to be sticky for a bit.
All right, so there's our lychee sample. And we're just going to give this a minute to degas before we take our good spectrum. But right away, clearing things out. There's a little dip down there. That might be useful. But uh, I'm not seeing a whole lot. So really the bubbles are dwarfing any actual signal that might be here. So we're just going to need to give this some time to degas. And while we're waiting for that, I'm going to collect the original as well. All right, so we're still degassing, but we do have at least a spectrum from the lychee. I don't think it's going to be too distinctive, but we'll see. And now we're going to pull this out. I may want to get another spectrum once we've got a little bit more of those bubbles out, but it looks like it's almost cleared up. And so now here is the original flavor. Just get that water drop off the side. I've only got two cuvettes, so i got to go remove them and clean them between specimens. Yeah, I'm not seeing much of a difference here. I don't know if this is going to be useful. The heat of the halogen lamp does definitely help to dislodge some of the bubbles, and then also just kind of tapping it on the table or poking it with my finger can help a little bit as well to get some of the bubbles out. Uh, if I really wanted to get the best quality results, I'd probably have to stick these in a vacuum chamber and pull off as much of the CO2 as I could. But for a quick demonstration, I think we can probably get away without doing that. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll take a few more measurements from here just to make sure we've got good results. But for the moment, we'll take a memory of this. And so we're going to call this our original. And then we're going to put back the lychee and see if there's any measurable difference at all that's not lost in the noise of the bubbles. All right, so we've got a little more down here in the UV, it does look like there's a little bit of a shift. So we are consistently down low here at lychee. And if we then put the original back in there. Uh, yeah, it's not looking good. We're going to update the trace from the original. That's just noise. I don't think we're going to get anything useful out of these. All right, so it is worth a try, but uh, unfortunately it looks like this Ramenet spectrometer doesn't actually work for distinguishing all the flavors if they don't have artificial colors in them. So not as good of a result as I was hoping for. Let's try switching gears and go to the second part of the video and take some Raman spectra. So I just made another batch of ramen. This one is beef, and we're going to go take a sample of that and then pop into the lab and check it out while I'm waiting for it to cool. I do actually plan to eat this, so I did grab a fresh food-grade pipette right out of the package. Hasn't been anywhere else in the lab. All right, so here we are back in the lab after a session in the kitchen. We've got some of the chicken ramen broth in here right now, and I'm going to go grab a spectrum of that. And obviously it is very distinct from any of the Ramane. We've got a lot more absorbance in, especially the UV right here. We've got this huge peak around 350 nanometers for the uh, chicken. And now let's take a look at what happens if we swap that out for the beef. Just visually we can see a huge difference. The beef is a lot darker, so I'm expecting to see a significant difference in the spectrum as well. So it's a lot more cloudy. So, oh boy, that's that's a big difference. All 
I did leave the uh, beef broth to sit a little bit more in the noodle, so we might have some of the, uh, the kind of the general broadband absorption is probably from being in contact with the pasta a little bit longer. And let's actually just do that in the filter graph here. So we'll do a... memory here and this is our beef ramen now let's change that I think the color is red so we'll just make that red Anyway, I think that's a wrap. We've measured four different flavors of ramen -A and two flavors of ramen and got spectra from all of them and it's pretty clear that the ramen spectra of chicken and beef are very different. The ramen spectra of yuzu, orange, and original are very different, but unfortunately lychee and original are so close that we can't really tell them apart with this instrument. So you'd need an instrument with more dynamic range to really do good ramen spectroscopy. But for ramen spectroscopy, the cheap little unit I've got here is more than adequate. Thank you.